Uh, good evening to all in uh, Europe. Uh, good morning, good afternoon for those of you who are tuning in from further afield. Uh, we'd love to see where you're watching from, so uh, wave your flags, give your country a shout out in the uh, comments below. See if we can find out uh, who's here. Not that. Good. I'm Andy, I've worked at Heritage Park Centre for 12 years. I spend a lot of my time meeting people and creating stories about them and their vehicles. Um, good evening, sir. Um, if this is the first time you tuned in, then please do take a look at our other interviews over on IGTV. Um, I chat with Jamie Orr will definitely be of interest to those of you from a, a watercool VW background. Uh, joining us for a chat this evening uh, is Dave Watkins from Resto Shack. Good evening, Dave. You right, buddy? How's it going? Yeah, we're good, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, yeah, we're all right. Yeah, it's nearly the end of the working week, so we're ready for the weekend. Cool. I just had a, a minor panic because uh, someone in the office changed the password for Instagram five minutes before the uh, Instagram <laughs> live and I almost didn't get on. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. Um, uh, for those of you who are not aware of kind of Resto Shack, could you give us um, a bit of a rundown? Tell us what you're all about. OK, yeah. Yeah. So at Resto Shack, we're just we're a really small little shop um, hidden off down in the West Country in the south of England. Um, we build primarily um, 80s cars is our uh, is our field is where we want to be. So we do Mark II Escorts, Audi Quattros, a lot of Volkswagens, Mark 1s, Mark 2s, some 3s. Um, yeah, and we just sort of, that's our sort of area. We, we, we try and slip right in the middle between the traditional sort of like manufacturers like E-types and all that sort of stuff and the modern guys. And we sort of go right down through the middle of that really is where we, where we like to be. Cool, cool. Um could you explain kind of how it started? How did you get into it? Um, I've been in the, the motor trade and in, in the body shop trade since I was sort of 17. So all of three years. Um, <laughs> and we were like, I'm 37. So yeah, tw yeah, 20 years. Um, yeah. And then I've always liked old cars. I've always liked the, the, the older side of, of the work. And then um, we were, I was working in this very building for somebody else. Um, they decided to sort of retire and sort of like give up. It wasn't, it wasn't um, 80 stuff then. It was a lot of like Italian cars. Um, and I decided to say, well, I'll have, a, I'll have a go, like try and start something up on my own. So I wasn't really too much interested in, in their work. I was more sort of, I, the building was a good sort of footprint foothold to get into start up. And I say, my thing is, is 80s cars. Like I'm, a, I'm a, an 80s child, if you were early 90s. So I, I just thought the cars that I used to see being driven around on the street and be like, oh my God, that was cool. Or my, my dad's friend had that like Granada Scorpio or something like that. I thought well, there must be. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe I can make a business. I'll, I'll give it a go. I have, no, I have nothing to lose. So. Cool, cool. And um, you, um, yeah, you combine kind of traditional skills and like modern technology. Is that sort of your... Yeah, so when we very, very first started, one of the first cars we did was a Mark 1. Um, okay. Which it was like the first one we ever did and when the guy came to me he said he'd been to some companies some like restoration company like big proper restoration companies and they're doing heelys and e-types like the, the traditional thing that you would class as uh, being restored and they looked at his mark one and they quaffed they're like well we're not doing this it's, it's far too new it's like a modern car and then when he went to a modern body shop they were like oh yeah we'll just we'll put it through like they would do like a new monday or something like, that, like bish bash bosh so and I thought, oh, yeah, that's that again. That's kind of where we we come in. So I've trained under traditional coach builders, like making E-type bonnets. Like I couldn't make one right now myself. I was I was only training under them. But um, yeah, so I've trained on that traditional side. But I bring those traditional skills into a more modern like car. So, again, in areas where you can't get the panels you have to make and you can't do. Um, yeah, you, you can't get everything. So we use those traditional skills. And there, are there particular tools and machines that you just kind of can't work without? The kettle. <laughs> uh, you have, um, I mean, we have got a, a good amount of tooling, but it's taken us years to get it. We didn't have it at the beginning. Um, we just had to work harder and, and think a bit more. Um, we've got a lot more gear now, but there's, there's, there's a lot more equipment you could have. So there's never really like one thing. Like it's nice to have a guillotine, but you can cut the steel by hand it's nice to like there's certain things you can't do about an english wheel or a shrink or stretcher but you can move around it in certain ways so there's i would never say like you can't have a restoration shop if you don't have the gear but it certainly is a very big help especially when you build we've recently over the last few years bought like proper jig beds so we can bolt cars down cut them all apart that like, they don't go anywhere 
and it's just again it's just it's just it evolves every time you you don't until you get a new piece of equipment you're like oh how did i get along without this until before i had it but you were doing it beforehand so yeah there's there's no i wouldn't say like you can't do anything but you do need if you've got good knowledge and you, you can get on with it so yeah um, you, do need, you need well sorry but you do you do still need a kettle <laughs> are you tea or coffee Ah, uh, tea. I don't drink coffee. I can't. It's really bad. And wherever I go, they say, do you want a coffee? I'm like, can I have a tea? And then they stir it with the coffee spoon and I can taste it really bad. I don't. Coffee cake, anything. Like, it drives my missus mental. Just that I can't. I don't like coffee. Such snowflake. I don't, I don't do hot drinks at all. So, yeah, I always kind of get just stared at when I'm... Can I have a glass of water, please? And then, yeah. yeah. don't do hot drinks at all. But if you don't, if you don't drink one or the other, and there's nothing worse... A, f a good friend of mine who remained nameless who I'm working with at the minute, he can tea and he makes great coffee, but he makes terrible tea. And I had to go through it with him. I was like, look, you can't make tea. This is how you make tea. Like, just terrible. <laughs> Have you ever had a car turn up or kind of had someone kind of want to book something in, which you've just basically refused? Like you, you couldn't do or you just didn't want to do it? Or um, I've never refused anybody point blank. We often get like, we can't do it in the time frame they want like oh, i want it done by the end of the summer or i want it this year like we can't meet those time frames and we just tell yeah, them yeah. we're not taking on any work till next year or a project of that size will take a certain amount of time we can't meet the deadline so just be honest up front i mean some some jobs that maybe come in so if somebody brought me a jensen interceptor for instance yeah i can rebuild it it's no problem it's, it's it's metal it's panel it's paint like i have done one but you prob sometimes i see it from you're probably better off go into a Jensen specialist who's got all the parts on the shelf. He's, he's gone through all the pitfalls. He knows where um, to go wrong and go right. Like we've done a lot of Mark 1 Gogs. We've done a lot of 911s. So like we know all the, all the little bits and pieces. We know how to get the bits or we've got the bits. So yeah, if it's something like really specialist, then it's probably something I just say to him, I'm more than happy to do it. But you might not necessarily get more value for money, but you might get better of your time. Like it would take me longer. I'll have to figure things out. Where do I get that? Like, at the minute, we, we're doing an Audi S2 coupe, like Resurrection is coming yeah. from Ireland, and he wants to make it a bit like an RS2. And of course, we're figuring out all the differences between the Porsche brakes and the Audi brakes because he wants Porsche calipers. And you know what I mean? Like if we were a, a, an out and out S2 specialist, we would have already have known, whereas we had to figure this stuff out. Yeah, yeah. I think as long as you, you let everybody know and you keep it pretty clear, it, just do the best you can. But yeah, maybe sometimes you're better to go to the specialist for the car rather than just a generic restorer. Do you get a lot of people with um, kind of lemonade money, champagne taste? Um, there is, you do get some of that. The whole like car SOS sort of like TV show generate, generates that because it's sort of people see cars that are built what in, 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 in made up time scales of like a week. And <laughs> All that like wheeler dealer stuff like we bought it for three grand we sold it for five we're like yeah but where's all his labor you know what i mean so but again you just got to tell them straight like especially when it comes to mark ones we've done dozens like we know i know roughly like once we get through the metalwork stage because they're all a bit different but when you get into paint depending on color and preferences like we can estimate it like pretty well but just tell people straight right at the beginning and if it scares the living death out of them it's probably best they don't go down that road in the first place <laughs> You don't want to tell them it's going to be five grand if it's going to be 10 or 1500 quid if it's going to be five because they'll only get a shock and it's not worth it. Just tell them straight at the beginning and that's it. And then if they don't want to have it done, they they don't want to have it done regardless if you get them into it and tell them it's a certain amount of money and they still work at the end, they'll still have had to have spent that money and they won't have wanted to. So just don't go down that path in the first place. Sounds like a uh, yeah, good way to do it, really. Um, yeah. So working on these these cars all the time. Have you got a few for yourself squirreled away? Um, no, I don't. Oh man, <laughs> I had a couple projects, but I just you do it all day, and you just it, at the beginning I was keen. I had two Mark Ones, I had a '79 GTI, and another Shell, and I had a Delta Integrale that I picked up like on on a deal, um, and they just sat there for years and years and years. And I was like, you know what? These are never going to get done. And even and I see that with like friends of mine doing their cars and I'm giving them grief about it um and I, they're not going to get done I was like just sell them to someone who'll do them and just take it's, it's the same thing I'm doing it all day so I don't want to do it all night like I like yeah. to play badly but I do so that's my thing that's my advice like I, I'm quite happy to work hard all day and I'm probably I'm one of those ones that do watch the car shows on tv but like you got I can't do a project as well it just didn't work I tried and it didn't so no 
no, no, no special products for me. If I had anything, I'd probably buy like a hot rod truck from the States, like a patina one, just done and get it here yeah. and paint it. That'd be enough for me. I think that'd be cool. But even then I'd probably get annoyed with working on it all the time. So <laughs> kind of like, it's like anything, isn't it? Like you don't want to go home and like at Her the guys at Heritage, they don't want to come home and be like, you know what? I think I'll sell some more parts. I think I'll ring some people up this evening while I'm watching these. <laughs> <laughs> they're like i've had enough i'm just telling so, yeah i think you've got to have a happy medium because i think if you do you're working uh, some people can do it but i just don't think you can work all night on your own projects and come back in and be really focused on your customer projects so i just focus all my attention on that and then slip off down the pub <laughs> <laughs> so working on these cars all the time has, have you had a car that you've kind of done and you thought i'd quite like that I, I, if I could have kept it? Um, I did think of this. I did think, we did a really nice Mini, but again, it, like, it's kind of like one of those things like you can have any car in the world, what, what car do you want? And you just don't know. You could only have yeah. five. Not so many. There's, there's been cars that you think, oh, you've really, like you put a bit of, a bit of, ev bit of yourself into everything. You, re like, you really want to build them. So yeah, but at the end, you've looked at them for so long. The, again, the first Mark I we did, the white Mark I for Matt G, um, that was a great car and it was like it was the first if you know like your first it was the first real restoration that Resto Shack did so it'll always be but I don't want to keep it because it's, um, I've driven dozens and dozens of Mark 1s since then so yeah I'd, I'd say they've all got a special place but there's no really one that I'd probably steal from someone maybe that one's still to come maybe it's behind me <laughs> someone's asked how about the Fiat 4x4 the Fiat 4x4. We, well we've done a Fiat Panda yeah for a friend of mine that was just one of my close friends we sort of did it um, oh yeah, because I think that was there when you visited, wasn't it? That's, yeah, I think it was actually. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's one of my closest friends. We were just we were doing it again. We did do it. So yeah, actually, they caught me out. We did do that on the side. So, but the, uh, then that was painful enough. So, and that wasn't even my car. So I didn't even have to have the responsibility of grinding all the all the rubbish out of it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you won the lottery tomorrow, what would you do? Would you kind of keep working, or would you pack it all up, just go and do something else? Um, no, I definitely, I would keep doing it. I mean, it's what, it's what I love to do. I think if you won the lottery, it would just make it easier, like financially, like t it would still have to make some kind of money because otherwise you're just throwing it away. You might burn yeah, it, yeah, like, yeah. Take the pinch off at the end of each month and you could obviously explore buying new technologies. You could have all the 3D printers and the scanners and you, you know, and you could, you could really make something of it. But yeah, I wouldn't give up. Plus, I always thought that as like, cool, if one of my employees won the lottery and like and, and left, I'd be kind of screwed. So you um, <laughs> think of all the cars and that. We, we we've got we've got dozens of restorations in various stages for people. If we would just be like, oh, by the way, I'm going to go and live in Marbella now, or <laughs> yeah, find someone else to do it. It would be a nightmare. Like you, you've uh, some of our customers we've been building for for years. You've got you've known them through like good times and bad. So you'd really be dropping a minute, I think, to do that. So yeah, I in I would carry on, but the pressure would be off. Do you see what I mean? Do you think you get bored if you if you kind of just stop working? Oh yeah, yeah. I literally I take if I have like a holiday, unless I go somewhere or go abroad. If I'm just sort of like, oh, I'll take a couple of days off, or I haven't had any holiday for ages. Even on like Sundays, I'm kind of like, I'm a bit bored, like sat around and just thinking about what you can do. So yeah, like luckily with the with the lockdown and everything, because we were so remote, one of our guys was off on furlough, but I was here like all the way through and just and just carried on and it was blissful the roads were quiet like i think everybody apart from obviously the massive like the fear of the pandemic like i think that the underlying sort of like day to day just getting around it was actually like quite nice we couldn't get so many bits but yeah it was just enjoyable and you just you thought well i can i probably i, I might have had to shut up, but i don't have to so realistically everything you're doing was a bonus so you weren't really again running around with your hair on fire so it was quite good yeah, yeah. um Obviously, COVID aside, do you get much time to go to shows and stuff like that? Does that, does that bother you or you kind of, you just want to put that down at the, at the weekend? Um, again, yeah, I'm not like a real show sort of like scene sort of person. Like I'll, I'm, I'm in the shop, I'm a builder, you know what I mean? Like I let the customers take the cars out and show. I've done a couple. I know um, that the guys that do retro rides, Dave Murphy, I think it is. Like I did one of the first ones at Prescott many years ago that when I first started. And I did the first one they did at um, Goodwood, which is really good fun. And, but for me, I don't like a show. I don't like to stand there on ceremony, like, hello, we do this sort of thing. I just like to set yeah, yeah. 
let all the customers stand by the cars. They can talk to people because they're the best people to do it. They're the ones that spent the money with us. Like if they're there saying that we've done a good job, I can say it till I'm blue in the face, but actually somebody there who built that car and spent that money. And then we wander off and a good one, we were at the bar at the end of the start. <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, yeah, I'm not a huge ghost. They do, they do a, like a cars and coffee meet down here in the West Country called Refuel. I don't mind. I know the guys that run that. I pop along to that, like support that if we can. But again, yeah, it's, it, I'm not a massive sort of showy sort of person. So I'll just, I'll stay in the shop. I'll let the cars go out, let the customers go out. Fair enough. So with that in mind, is there anything in particular you'd like to see kind of happen in the car scene in general then over the next few years? Or are you kind of happy with where it's at? Or do you wish it was like it used to be? Or uh, again, again, I don't really move too far in the scene. Like I'm in the restoration scene, if you know what I mean. So I follow and I'm interested in what other restorers are doing and stuff like that and, and who's using what and what products you're using and techniques and so on. And like I talk to a lot of other people on like Instagram and, and, and Facebook and that about how what they're using. So as far as the car scene, like I don't really follow it. Like I don't really get the whole um yeah, I don't really go to it and all that sort of stuff. Like I don't get all the all the yeah, all the shows and the sort of stuff and the because it's it's either new it's not all like old I'm into old stuff, but when you've got yeah. like brand new cars with finance wheels and finance there, I just you, I mean anyone can get that. You know what I mean? But yeah no one can get a seventy five swallowtail because they you just can't find them. So yeah, um yeah I don't really follow the scene so much. So I wouldn't really say I know what it should be like or, or should be like. I knew what Run to the Sun was like in the 90s. It was great. Bring that back. <laughs> that was awesome. Love that. Um, but apart from that, yeah, if that's seen, then yeah, bring that back. <laughs> if, you could, if you could turn the clock back to when you started Resto Shack, is there anything you'd do differently? Um, only in like business sense, because I'm not like a businessman. I'm a restorer who runs yeah. a but yeah, there was just like small decisions at the beginning to do with like banks and insurances and stuff like that, that I kind of got led astray like naively. So things like that I would do different. But again, like a lot of the, like the work we did, like, yeah, in hindsight, silly things that happened, like, oh, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done that or I would have known that would have happened or I wouldn't have left that spanner so close to the edge of the bench, like little things. But there's no major turns that like, um, I'm happy with everything we did and everyone we worked for and with. So yeah, I don't. I think if we did it differently, maybe it wouldn't be the same now. So, and I'm quite happy with that. That's it. true. So, but yeah, only really business sense stuff that I say, I'm not a businessman. I've had customers say, you should do this. And they're, they're, they're high flying businessmen. Some of the people I've, I've worked for and they're like, you should do this and you should do that. And you should get that. And I'm like, really? I'm just sort of living day to day, week to week. I'm just quite happy to be here. Someone's commented a workshop with a real road to it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. You've been down that road. It is Indeed. Yeah apparently we are supposed to be getting a new workshop when when it will happen we don't know there's we've been talking about it with the guy for a few years there's there's talks and there's grand ideas and that but sort of we like our little shed yeah the road would be nicer if it wasn't so bumpy but it keeps um yeah it keeps us isolated away it kept covid away so <laughs> um so you're talking about kind of the people you're talking to online and things like that there other resto or customising shops either in the UK or overseas that you follow or watch online that you think kind of our followers might find interesting anyone you want to kind of shout out yeah there's a few people um yeah, there's a few people I follow there's a guy called Andy the paint who's um in Essex I think at like great painter um doesn't give too many secrets away doesn't give away <laughs> but there's some things that but yeah really 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 sort of top end work so yeah enjoy following him which is which makes me sort of strive that I, to, 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 to be better. Uh, a friend of mine, Gav, at Trailer Queens Restorations up in North Devon, like great with the air-cooled stuff. I see that's not really my area, but yeah, it does an awesome job. And there's there's a few people just like good painters and that, like around the area. Um, and then there's pages that you can follow. There's like Refinish a Porn, which I've been lucky to get on before, which is all about just like painting and good finishes and stuff like that. Like, and yeah, and people put little hints and tricks and you see them share share like painters and body guys and you follow them. And yeah, this is, there's just a lot out there. And then there's a few like good sort of, um, yeah, like English wheeling and coach builders. I can't remember them all by name now, but I kind of follow yeah. that on Instagram and things pop up and then I follow. There's, a, there's an awesome guy in America called like Pro Shaper in like Massachusetts. He's got awesome accent. I just love listening <laughs> to him talk, but he just like moves metal around like butter and it's just amazing for me to watch. So yeah, there's a few people, but there, there's good guys everywhere. But I, I tend to just try and follow the hashtags of like something I'm looking for, like a particular gun or brand or something I'm using and then who's using that and then go on. That. I mean, there's, 
there's there's great painters like down the road you know what i mean that i follow friends of mine and then there's people abroad and then there's all of the big hot rod guys in the states and the ones you see on tv like the can dig it guys who've now got their own um big kid blocks you know what i mean and i go back and forth for them a little bit with some of their tools and things so yeah there's 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 there's, there's huge amounts out there to follow there's huge amounts of stuff to take on board if you could um if you could pick your business and family life up and put it somewhere else on the planet if I yeah considering if you could do it would you take it anywhere else or are you happy down in Devon I quite like it down here I mean I do like Holland I got a friend in Holland I go over there quite a bit I've been over there a lot and I think yeah this this is nice like I could sometimes I really think I could live there I could live here I've been all the way up the west coast of the states on a road trip before like I was in Santa Cruz for a day and I remember standing on the pier and I thought this is nice like this <laughs> it's not Old, it's not it's like the it literally looks like everything you saw on tv in the 90s as a kid and i was like this is nice but whether or not it's nice to live there under the, under what the stuff they've got going on over there i don't know but yeah i do really like holland but at the moment i'm quite i'm quite happy in devon but yeah i would i would maybe i would maybe slip over to holland it'd be nice cool cool could you could you give us a bit of a, a walk around yeah yeah I've, I've got my phone precariously placed so whether or not we go back there but we'll give <laughs> yeah, and i'll flip the camera out here right if anyone's got any questions for Dave, you want to kind of yeah, just drop them in the comments, and we'll kind of uh, fire them around while uh, while he sh shows us around. So we're building a Mark II Escort RS2000 for a customer at the minute, which is at the minute in dry build. So we've um, it was a standard RS2000 custom. We fitted an X-Pack kit at the moment, which is horrendously badly made in fiberglass. <laughs> so we've, we're working on that and cutting it up. We made a um, just we made a cage. We got the hoop bent for us um it's it's just a show cage so it's not really sort of anything hugely special we've done like a full if i can get all the way underneath it's not dirty my new shirt i put on for this <laughs> but we've done like a full four links um fully floating rear end um okay. and we've had an exhaust built by simpson exhausts um you can't really see much the stump guards and everything all right um wheels were made to mimic um original rs four spokes but made by image wheels and he's got a oh. base and brakes and everything underneath it very difficultly um, open the bonnet. A customer wanted like louvres in there. It's not really my style, but this is what happens. <laughs> then tools and that fall over everywhere. It's got a really rare, rare um, Warrior twin cam head on a Pinto block. It's an all aluminium 2.5 um, engine. It was built by Connaught Racing Engines in Essex. It's about 320 horsepower. And again, we've got a big tubular manifold there made by Simpson uh, and Heathrow, which I thought, oh, Simpson, I've seen them around and everything, and they must be like scary. Um, my glasses have got jammed under the bonnet now. This is what happens when you try and go live. <laughs> right, bear me a second. Right, there we go. Um, yeah, I thought they'd be scary, um, expensive, but Matt Simpson's a really, really nice guy, and it was £1,200 front to back with the manifold. I was shocked. So, um... Yeah, and then we've got a little Mark, Mark II, II here, a really early Mark II, um, oh, cool. small, small bumper, which the customer is um, it's actually, I like the colour, but it's actually going um, Mars red. Can you flip us back to portrait? Sorry, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. My videographers always tell me that I've got to film everything in portrait, so sorry, yeah. <laughs> um, the, um, yeah, Mark II, and then we've just done a Polo, no, a Corrado pedal box conversion. Okay. Under there with um, a fabulous mount for the R32 pedal, and oh, he's taken it out now. But there was a, we put a Polo uh, shift towel which has already been mounted in. So is it going R32? You say R32? Yeah, R32 uh, Mars red. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on the full spec of it. We're just doing the shell. We're just doing the metalwork repairs, the mods, okay. and we'll paint it. And then he'll have it back on a trolley and then he'll build it up. The guy's an electrician, so he do all the wiring. He's got all fabulous mounts and everything, so that'll go in. So that's our sort of like basic sort of metal shop. And then if I take you into the... What is the paint, paint shop? shop. Um, yeah, we've got um, Mark II VR6 that we've had under restoration for a while. It's actually only in here. It just had the bonnet got chipped, so the bonnet's been painted. Um, it was a full restoration uh, completed last year the customer drove it it's not fast enough brought it back and then we fitted a vf engineering supercharger kit um on the side we've run the duct in for the charger around behind the front bumper and then it pops up here in the engine bay the air mass meter is relocated behind the bumper and we just tried to make it look oem clean there's a cover to go on the battery we're having 
printed and the engine covers aren't on at the minute because it's going up to stealth tuning on Monday to be mapped because oh. they don't supply the kit with the map anymore. But yeah, it's kind of, it's pretty, it's pretty decent. We've done it. We put, it was a white driver when it came in. Okay. So, so it's a pretty substantial sort of change from everything. Um, the covers now are all on at the moment. But... That's quite a nice interior, isn't it, that one? Yeah, if I can, we've got cause everything's covered up because everything's pretty. Um, I think you can see the back just about. Um, yeah, it's a BMW cloth and on the um, on the seats. I think that's what he chose. But yeah, everything's just like nice and super clean. We've got a bigger steering wheel to go on. He's not happy with the three hundred Momos and three hundred and fifty. Um, yeah, and just bits and pieces really. We've just done it sort of nice and clean. And he's got his little. VR6 emblems and bits and pieces and that on it. When and we yeah. came up, you were talking about people nicking your photos from the paint shop and, and posting them online. So you've got uh, stickers everywhere, haven't you now? Yeah, we've got stickers there. We did have one at the top, but it got painted over. But yeah, we've got sort of stickers and everything everywhere. Just to, I mean, it's not a problem if people want to take our images. You can just, you can just, um, yeah, if they're just, if they're credited. The worst thing is on YouTube, people steal your videos and use them as part of their videos. And then, like, if they credit you for it, it's fine. Like, it's no, it's no biggie, really. So yeah, that's our little slice of Devon at the minute. There is, we got a mechanical shop down the bottom, but there's loads of stuff in the way. And trying to do it while we're holding the phone, I'll probably trip over. And you can see, <laughs> see up against the camera. So we'll leave that for another time. Oh, we got some love from the north of Portugal for you, uh, which is cool. Jolly good. Someone, someone's asked how the Quattro is coming along. Um, we've got two actually under the under under restoration at the minute: an early champagne gold ten valve, and then a uh, black, well, metal, a gunmetal grey twenty valve. The twenty valve is actually coming back in um, on Monday to finish prepping the underneath, and then we can um, start paneling it out and then get onto the bodywork. So yeah, that will be one of our um, next paint jobs. We've got a, uh, that um, series one G60, edition one G60 you saw when you were down. Still got that. Yeah. That's, that's been painted some point um the tail end of the year and then we've got a datsun 240 that's like heavy resto we've got to get on with that as well but we're actually doing a um coming in next week is a type 25 docker which okay normally is not my cup of tea but it's it's quite a cool build it's got a super engine in the back we get to make wider like quattro style arches it's got a cage going in it by somebody else it's quite a wild and wacky build like air ride here and all this sort of stuff it kind of We've never really got involved in anything like that before, so it's it's just a fun thing to tick the box, scratch the itch, yeah, yeah. done 911s, E-types, crazy <laughs> air go car. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's good to do a bit of everything. Awesome. Well, um, yeah, we'll just flick through here and uh, someone said they need something doing in Canada if you fancy a trip out there. <laughs> it's a bit cold, well, only if it's a warm bit, it's a bit cold out there in Canada. But um, you feel free. Put it in a container and send it over. We're, we're on the thingy for luggage on that English wheel on, on the plane. Yeah. Yeah, you would take, fair, there's some great guys in the States um, that are yeah, more than capable of doing that, doing that sort of work. Awesome. Well, th thank you very much for showing us around, Dave. It's been a, no. an absolute pleasure. Great to um, yeah, catch up again. After. So, people who want to kind of have a bit more of a look around, we did an article about Dave at Resto Shack a year or two ago, I think it was, which yeah, is over on the Heritage magazine. So... Yeah, go ahead and kind of check that out. Um, for people wanting to look you up, uh, you're on Instagram, you're Dave underscore Resto. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, Resto Shack on Facebook and then RestoShack.com on the interweb. Yeah, RestoShack.com's the website, yeah. And then just at Dave Resto on Instagram. But you will see pictures of me singing badly and a lot of pictures of my dog as well. So you'll have to fill with them out. <laughs> um, so for anyone out there who might be interested in chatting live with me or Steph, um, yeah, please drop us a DM and we can obviously have a chat about getting you on. Massive thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, we're going to be saving this chat to our stories so you'll be able to watch it on Instagram TV and then we'll also republish it onto Facebook as well as soon as the technology allows us to. Uh, we'll see you all again soon. Stay safe. Thank you again, Dave. Have a lovely evening. See you all see again you. soon. Cheers, Cheers mate. Thank you. Bye-bye.